Start Alive, you'll see, it, um, you'll see it on my website, you'll see it on uh, Genesis Park, you'll see it on a number of websites have this. This is the dinosaur and the mammoth carving that we saw in the cave in France of the dinosaur on the left side and the mammoth on the right side when they're never supposed to have existed together. Perception and Sensation Belief and Non-Belief Perception is an abstraction, not a replication of the real world around us. As humans, we all have the innate ability to find familiar shapes and patterns in our environment, the things we see. It helps us survive. Sometimes, however, our neural response to environmental stimuli is in error, and when this happens, we can see things that just aren't there. Sometimes these are things we just want to see. Other times there are things we just can't help but see. Our belief systems also play a role. But just because we believe that we have seen something doesn't prove that we actually have. It's the sort of kind of effect. Hey, that sort of kind of looks like, well, you fill in the blank. As adults, we call this phenomenon pareidolia. As children, we called it the cloud game. Hey, is that a pig? Doesn't that kind of sort of look like Godzilla? You get the idea. So what does all this have to do with mammoths and dinosaurs and cave art? To answer that, we need to go back in time several thousand years. Ah, the Upper Paleolithic. Although many mysteries surround his Cro-Magnon inhabitants, one thing cannot be denied. They were artists. Cave walls were the canvases, and over the course of tens of thousands of years, they left us art. Lots of it. Thousands of polychrome images, primarily illustrated with mineral pigments and charcoal, adorned the walls and ceilings of nearly 400 different cave sites throughout Europe, with heavy concentrations in what is now Spain and France. Most of these illustrations are of the animals the Cro-Magnon either hunted, feared or revered and are created with such a level of life and detail the animals are the masterworks of prehistoric art and are of an accuracy that provides invaluable evidence to paleozoologists as to what fauna coexisted with man at the time of each drawing. With all that said, keep in mind that the following is an oversimplified, though fairly accurate, dramatization of what may have happened in the life of one prehistoric cave artist. Well, according to one scientist, anyway. The story goes something like this. One morning, our cave artist decided to go out into the world that lay just outside of his cave, and he saw a bison. He studied what he saw, came back to the cave, and using the natural contours of a rock wall, an incising tool, and some pigments and charcoal, created this. The following week, he left his cave again and saw a pride of lions. So he came back to his cave and created this. Next week, he saw a horse, came back and did this. Then he saw this, and did this, saw this, then did this, and so on and so forth. One morning, our artist woke up to a noise he had never heard before. So he ran outside and witnessed the most terrifying thing he had ever seen. A battle between two of the largest, most ferocious, yet magnificent creatures living during his time. A woolly mammoth and a Tyrannosaurus rex. After witnessing this horrific event, he ran back to his cave with the image engraved in his mind and created this. And here is the proof. 
the proof that man, mammoths, and dinosaurs were contemporaries, at least around the time of the Great Flood of Noah. Well, well, actually, um, I, I drew this. Um, no such cave art exists anywhere. But this, this is real. That's it? This is what the artist actually created. This is the undisputed proof, the smoking gun, the thorn in every evolutionist's side, the nail in the coffin to any kind of debate that man, mammoths, and dinosaurs were contemporaries not so long ago. So how do we know that this is actual cave art and depicts a terrifying head-to-head -head battle between a T-Rex and a mammoth? I mean, besides the obvious photo-like quality and anatomically correct, unmistakable details of the work? Because this scientist says so. Is he a legendary archaeologist? Is he a prominent paleontologist? How about a noted geologist? And what kind of scientist is he? Ah, he's a doctor of dental science. An orthodontist, to be more precise. His name is Jacques Cousteau. Huh? He also huh? believes that there are many more such huh? previous... Huh? Oh, sorry about that. His name is Jack Quazo. He also believes that there are many more such prehistoric cave depictions of dinosaurs that are intentionally being hidden. But then again, he also believes that this is biologically, geologically, and climatically feasible. More than that, it is fact. He also believes that if you could live long enough, this is how you would look. And on top of all this, there is a global cover-up, so you won't find out the truth about any of this. Listen to what he has to say about this incontrovertible piece of evidence, this dinosaur cave art. This is the picture that you'll see on Buried Alive. You'll see, it, um, you'll see it on my website. You'll see it on uh, Genesis Park. You'll see it on a number of websites have this. This is the dinosaur and the mammoth carving that we saw in the cave in France of the dinosaur on the left side and the mammoth on the right side when they're never supposed to have existed together. In all fairness to the doc, I know it is pretty hard to see what it is he is trying to show you in these pictures from his video, so here's a better representation of what it is you should be looking at. This is his dinosaur slash mammoth confrontation, and this is what it says next to his pictures. You can find these pictures and most of this information either on his website or in his book, Buried Alive. So without further ado, back to Clouseau. Oh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Quazo. That, that's Quazo. These two creatures came together in the battle one time, and this, whoever uh, drew this, the confrontation, I call it, um, was in the cave called Bernafel, and it was a closed cave, because all caves are open, and when you find a cave that's closed, you know something's in there they don't want you to see. And when you find a cave that is closed, you know there's something in there they don't want you to see. Really? Who's they? And why do they have to be hiding anything? I guess a cave being closed, oh, I don't know, because they thought it might be too dangerous, or it might be on private property, or it needs to be protected from vandals, or it needs to be protected from the environment. Well, these reasons are just nuts. They are probably the well-documented, well-funded evolutionary conspiracy consisting of the entire scientific community, world governments, corporate giants, evil media moguls, New World Order, the Illuminati, the local police, the international police, the FBI, the CIA, the second government on the grassy knoll, Gates, Oprah, Hitchens, Dawkins, and all their co-conspirators, them. They are all trying to stop the world from saying all the proof, the hundreds if not thousands of dinosaur paintings hidden in the caves, the proof that dinosaurs and mankind did live side by side, and by doing so protecting the blasphemy, which is not only evolutionary theory, but all of modern science, thus keeping the world from plunging into the utter chaos it would be in if its inhabitants found out the truth that the Flintstones was more than just a TV show, and that our lovable modern Stone Age family was in fact, by the grace of God, a Bronze Age Bible family. Is this the they you were referring to, Doc? I hope not. Anyway, back to Dr. Jack's amazing discovery. Still don't see it? Don't worry, <laughs> you're not alone. It's probably just these guys up to their old tricks again, making sure you can't see what should be as easy to see as all other cave art. But here is what you should be seeing, according to the doc. But why does this have to illustrate a confrontation between a dinosaur and a mammoth? Maybe this caveman was trying to depict the terrifying confrontation between, uh, I don't know, um, a surly sea elephant and a saber-toothed cat. Or maybe our Paleolithic painter was the very first cartographer and was depicting the confrontation between Asia and North America. Maybe this is nothing more than just a representation of a confrontation between a dinosaur condom and a penguin. Yes, uh, this is a condom. I mean, really, can't you see just about anything in this picture? 
Aren't we really just playing the cloud game on a rock here? Paridolia in action. Hey, there's a horse. Here's an elephant. Not big enough? How about this mastodon? There's a camel. Ah, but we need a dinosaur. How about this one? Or this one over here? Like the doc, I am no geologist. But I do know the difference between a man-made carving and a natural rock formation. I am also by no means an art historian or expert, but I do know the difference between a play of light and a work of art. I'm just saying. But if Dr. Quazo thinks that dinosaurs look like Gary Larson cartoons and mammoths look like some weird, bug-eyed, trunkless, tuskless moth monsters, then I guess this is the proof that will bring the entire scientific community a tumbling down and prove that all the Bible literalists have been right all along. The earth is only 6,000 years old. Dinosaurs did live with man, even after God had flushed everything else away and continued to live up until not so long ago. Or maybe, just maybe, we should just leave prehistory to the experts and leave the smiles to the smile makers. This is the dinosaur and the mammoth carving that we saw in the cave in France of the dinosaur on the left side and the mammoth on the right side when they're never supposed to have existed together. <laughs>